You're listening to Men of Abundance, episode 195 with Dwayne Perro. Whether you're transitioning from the military to civilian life or from one job to another, one career to another, or from a job to a business, it's tough and oftentimes painful. Welcome to Men of Abundance, the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community, living a life of integrity, honor, and the abundance mentality. Prepare to pay it forward with your host, former army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Wally Carmichael. What is going on, Men of Abundance? I am Wally Carmichael, your founder and host of the Men of Abundance podcast. Today, we are talking about transition. Now, my guest today is a veteran, and he does like to primarily talk to veterans like myself. Being a veteran, I too spend a lot of time talking to our veterans. But we are also talking to those of you out there who have never been associated with the military and somehow transitioning from one job to another, career to a career, or even from your job to a business. Heck, maybe even you're adding on another business. Bottom line is this, transition can be very difficult, especially when you're moving into unknown territory. But just like in the military, we do what we can to ease the pain. Many ways that we do that is recon. We gather as much information as we possibly can. We call it G2. We get the G2 on what the next step is, what that next chapter is. Try to find out what it is that we don't know because most fear comes from the unknown. As soon as you know a little bit about what it is that you're moving into, some of the fear goes away, but there's still a little bit of anxiety. The bottom line is this. You have to pull the trigger. You have to go ahead and and just take action. Well, that's in part some of the conversation that we're going to have today. Speaking of action, one thing that I would love for you to take action on today is to be abundant in your life today by paying it forward and sharing men of abundance with everyone you come in contact with. You know what? And I usually say, especially the ones that you love, but whether you like them or not, some people are, you know, some people are jerks. Let's put it that way. Some people need these conversations because they're jerks. And maybe if they listen to some of these conversations that we are having here at Men of Abundance, just maybe they can change their mindset. Maybe they can enhance their mindset a little bit so that they aren't so pissed off going through life. They might have something to look forward to. That might be all they need is just a little something to look forward to. So how about you do your part and say, hey, I know you're having a bad day or maybe you're just an asshole, but... Why don't you go listen to this podcast I've been listening to? I think it might resonate with you a little bit. I think you might get something out of it. And if not, oh well, I tried. And you know what? Chances are that individual is going to come back to you a couple episodes later. And thank you. And it's the best feeling in the world. So be abundant in your life today. Pay it forward and share men of abundance with everyone you come in contact with. All right, so let me introduce you to our featured guest today. Dwayne Perro is very committed and passionate about supporting transitioning veterans. He is a veteran who has served in the Air Force for eight years and has spent his past 20 years supporting the federal government as a contractor in Washington, D.C. area. Through his dedication perseverance, self-discipline, integrity, and solid leadership skills, he has progressed to be a chief information officer for the Federal Aerospace Engineering Firm. Using his military and executive experiences, he has been able to step out as an entrepreneur and establish Landmark Life Coaching, which includes the Team Vets program that is focusing on providing what transitioning veterans need to create and lead a fulfilling and empowering life that honors their duty and sacrifice. He has created and hosts the Charlie Mike podcast, which showcases the successes of veteran entrepreneurs, is a contributor on Huffington Post for veteran-related topics and promoting veteran-owned businesses, recently published his first book, The Empowered Veteran. His mission is to honorably and respectfully serve courageous groundbreakers and transitioning veterans to persevere in defining and executing their future by providing an atmosphere of camaraderie and trust that honors their dedication and commitment. Men of Abundance, it is my honor to introduce you to Dwayne Perro. Dwayne, welcome to Men of Abundance, brother. How are you doing? Doing well. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, my pleasure. Where are you at in the world? 
I am in Southern Maryland. Southern Maryland? I have not been there yet. <laughs> What's the weather like today? Uh, today is a little cool, actually. We're on this roller coaster. It was 60 yesterday, 30 today, and it'll be, I think, 60 again tomorrow. Wow, so. that's a huge roller coaster, man. That's yeah. a big difference. So before we get too much, get into our conversation here, I like to start out with an attitude of gratitude. What do you have to be grateful for today, Dwayne? Yeah, I think today it's health, right? Health and wellness. Uh, I find days that you know I'm that my health and I feel you know inside the wellness is is at a is at a high that I, I perform my best and things just go that well. Yeah, and what does that look like to you? What do you do to stay healthy and and uh, be able to do what you do? Yeah, for me, it's, you know, eating clean is, is probably the biggest challenge. And as long as I can be there about an 80 to 85 percent clean eating, I, I feel energized. I feel like I can really uh, take on the day well. And as well as ensuring that I get in, I do high intensity interval training. And so, you know, mm -hmm. three to four nights uh, a week, I try to make sure I get that in. And, and it's, it's great for relieving stress as well when you when you can get those kinds of exercises in. Yeah, you know. I, somebody asked me just this weekend, as a matter of fact, what is my motto, so to speak, for health and fitness uh, that I tell myself. And, and for years, I've always told myself I, I eat about 70, 80 percent clean. The rest, whatever the hell I want in moderation. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah. you know, as far, I love high intensity workouts. I love the insanity workouts. I love stuff like that. Mm -hmm. My body just it really beats me up if I don't stick with it. But then, you know, I've, all the everything I put myself through throughout 25 years in the military, aches and pains are coming along. So uh, lately, I've been <laughs> swimming more. I do ocean, open ocean swimming, or not really open, just out, you know, into the ocean swimming, yeah, and no. it's keep my cardio up for sure. And uh, you know, it's less stress on my joints. But I do like to stress my bones and joints a little bit to prevent that osteoporosis and all the other stuff that comes with inactivity. Yeah, no doubt. It, it is good for keeping that stuff at bay. Uh, my wife does it with me, and, and for her, bone density was an issue. And so it doing this type of exercise actually has slowed the deterioration of her bone density. Mm -hmm. So uh, so it's really good for you. Yeah, absolutely. you got to put stress on your body uh, in that way. Lifting weights, the high cardio, you know, high, high impact, medium impact. You know, you can't do a high impact mm -hmm. forever. But, yeah, it's a very, very good way to – you know, you just got to be real well-rounded just like we are with our diet, with our meal mm -hmm. plan. Got to be well-rounded, get a little bit of everything, and do what you enjoy. That's right. Yeah, so let me ask you this question, Dwayne. How would you describe yourself? Uh, you know, I, I would really describe myself as somebody who's driven internally. You know, I, I, I get up every day. I, I look for the positive in, in the day and I look to make sure that I'm adding value to others lives that are around me because that actually gives me energy throughout the day to keep going and keep doing uh, a lot of things you know, throughout the day and the week as it comes. And so, you know, I, I find that I'm really self-driven. I don't need that external push to get going. And so that's really been beneficial over my life to, to be that way because I've been able to build the life that I want rather than waiting for somebody or something to, cre you know, sort of create a life for me. Man, yeah, that's powerful. And um, you spent eight years in the Air Force. What did you do in the Air Force? Yeah, so when I was in the Air Force, I had some really unique assignments. I went in at 17, and I went into what they called the inf in the Air Force as the information management field, which eventually in the eight years I was in uh, morphed into the information technology field. And so I was uh, first stationed at Rome Laboratory, which was one of the Air Force super labs in Rome, New York. Spent uh, about three, four years there. Went overseas to uh, Operation Southern Watch at the tail end of Desert Storm. Spent a year in the sandbox over in Saudi Arabia. And when I came back from there, I was chosen for a special duty assignment to the Pentagon. And so I worked in the Secretary of the Air Force's office at the Pentagon. Wow, that's impressive. Very mm -hmm. impressive career in, in uh, eight short years, man. Yeah, yeah. So what... what I gotta ask you this because I'm always intrigued by this by all my fellow veterans. What uh, at the eight, young age of 17, what made you go into the Air Force? Yeah, it's funny. I, I always knew I was gonna go in. Uh, my grandfather's a World War II vet. My father is a Vietnam vet. And so I always had the military uh, upbringing and history in the family. And at, even at the youngest age, in the early 80s, I had this, this screen printing became popular. And, and, you know, I didn't have a typical logo put on the front. I had Sergeant Perro put on the back. 
and you know it kind of stuck with me and and you know I on my on my 17th birthday I went uh, had my parents go with me and signed up on delayed enlistment just knew it was what I wanted to do because I wasn't sure if I was actually going to go for higher education go to college and things like that never really had the drive for that I ultimately ended up doing that to, up to my master's degree but mm-hmm. yeah um, I just always had a I always had a drive internal to me uh, desire to serve my country and you know be in the military yeah very interesting I have a background in military as well but I had zero desire to join the military when I was growing up um, ran out of money for college and end up going anyway at the um, <laughs> suggestion of my uncle who was a first sergeant at the time <laughs> and, and loved it man I fell in love with basic training I just needed that discipline you know yeah definitely yeah, I was a hellion growing up for sure we'll, we'll <laughs> leave it at that that's a whole, whole other podcast whole other show man but um you know it, it definitely served you well because it led you on to do some much bigger things and you're still today uh serving veterans in a really big way in a couple ways actually i mean you got the charlie mike podcast you've got your uh your your coaching landmark life coaching and we were I want to get into that a little bit but for the civilians out there let's talk a little bit about Charlie Mike what is that all about yeah so I started the Charlie Mike podcast uh for the sole focus of highlighting the amazing successes of combat veterans given the uh the time frame that we're that we're just you know going through uh combat veterans that have that have become successful entrepreneurs because there's a lot of veterans that struggle with transition and one area they don't really think about is becoming an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. and with there being such a decline in that uh, that area, I felt that it would be a great chance to be able to bring on these really successful combat veterans who became successful entrepreneurs by using those things, those strengths that they learned, you know, while being deployed that, that have just, you know, served them so well as an entrepreneur. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I saw, I heard this statistic many years ago and while I, was, I, I retired three years ago, but I know I was going through the boots to business and all this kind of stuff and even before that I knew of the statistic that many there's there's more entrepreneurs who start their own business than the general population and there, mm. if you look at all the different businesses out there I mean Chick-fil-A there's I, we can just list them all off many of these businesses very large businesses were started by veterans mm-hmm. and it just seems like a natural to me and to you and I probably not to, and like you're saying not to so many other guys Maybe, but once you mention it to them, it it just seems like a perfect transition for veterans because those of us who who have leadership positions, we do so much in the military, we travel the world, we have so many different experiences, and it just seems like a natural transition to be, to be an entrepreneur to start your own business because we're already self motivated, we're already the type of people, and and we're generalizing here because not everybody falls mm-hmm. into that category, but <laughs> so many veterans really should look very closely at some sort of uh, business or even a side hustle of some sort while they're working for somebody else. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's it's amazing the core strengths that you develop in the military that, that translate just naturally in, into, into entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I have folks contact me and they're like, you know, Wally, I really want to start my own business and I've been working on it for so long and this, that, and the other, but I just can't get motivated and I'm just lazy and <laughs> I just can't, you know, really get up to do the things that I know I need to do. I see what you're doing. I've taken all these courses. I've done all this stuff. And I'm like, look, guy, you know, it doesn't sound like you're an entrepreneur. It sounds like you're an employee. And that's not a bad thing, Mm -hmm. you know, because it sounds like you're the type of guy that needs somebody there on your ass telling you, go do this, go do that. This is what I need you to do, giving you your time and, you know, even, even a leadership position. But you still need somebody over you. And when you're an entrepreneur, you don't have that luxury. Right. Yeah, and, and a lot of veterans make great employees for sure. I mean, mm-hmm. they bring they bring core strengths and abilities that just aren't natural to most people, but because they're natural to them or have become natural to them, they mm-hmm. kind of overlook it as just, well, everybody's that way, but they're not. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, for sure. And that's been my experience in working with many different guys um, for many years, quite frankly. Mm-hmm. So we're going to get into the Landmark Life Coaching, and I really want to dig into that and see what you're doing for, for guys and who specifically that is for. But before we even do that, I like to get into this kick in the gut moment. And this is where we really highlight and show guys that, look, we all get kicked in the gut. We all have our downtimes, And some of us, it happens multiple times throughout our lives. And it will continue to happen. 
but it's what you do with that. It's the resilience that you show that turns you around, either defines you or lifts you up, motivates you, whatever it is that makes the difference between you being a dynamic leader, a, a leader, an abundant leader, or just being kicked down. So if you would, share one of those kick in the gut moments with us and really make us feel that. Yeah, no doubt. You know, throughout my young professional career, I really struggled once I got out of the military with being passed over for promote or what appeared to be being passed over for promotions or opportunities. And I would see it happening time and time again. And I'd be sitting there feeling self-defeated and, and, and time really kind of jaded that, okay, what am I, what have I, what am I not doing? What am I missing that these other people seem to have? And really, you know, it, it really came down to an attitude change for me. Um, you know, it, cause after a while, you know, you feeling that, that kind of, you know, kick in the gut feeling after a while just gets old and you're like, all right, I've got to change something myself. I can't wait for somebody else to say, Hey, this is what it is, or you need to do this because this is what I did. And so I really started to change my own attitude to being much more positive and not being as focused on what others are achieving or not achieving, just focusing on my own path. And it really started to serve me well. And I started to not be <laughs> passed over or appear to be passed over. I had started to get those opportunities presented to me more directly. And it was a result, I believe, of, of you know, changing my own personal attitude because after a while, you can just become so self-defeating and, and so jaded in, in the way you think. And then that comes out and you don't even probably realize it sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so after a while, I was just, you know, I was just beat down. I was like, should I be changing career fields? Is this really what I should be in? And, you know, I, it doesn't seem like, you know, I'm kind of in in the know or in the group here. And so uh, I think it would just had to be changed internally to me, regardless of what the external factors were. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, and you, you you know the mindset is such a huge thing because obviously you were and correct me if I'm wrong, but you were doing the same things everybody else was doing. They just had mm. that different mindset. So how did that look to you? What did that mindset? What changed so much so drastically? And when did you start noticing the difference? Yeah, I think what changed was instead of focusing on like I was missing something, I. I took on more of a, uh, a growth, abund you know, mindset of abundance, you know, that I, that what I have achieved is great. You know, I, I want to achieve more and that's okay. And so once I started to, to change that, that way of thinking, it changed my behaviors and it became very noticeable to those around me. I want to achieve more and that's okay. Many guys get caught up with that statement right there. Just the mm -hmm. idea of, I want to achieve more right away their their mindset just goes well wait a minute I've, I, sh I should be happy with what I got yes absolutely <laughs> be happy with what you got but in the army we're always saying improve your foxhole always mm -hmm. improve your foxhole one because it keeps you busy it keeps you you know moving forward you're improving and you're just fortifying your position never mm -hmm. stop doing that there's so many reasons to keep there's so many reasons to that uh, metaphor but it's just extremely important to do that in your mind, in your life, and with everything. And it, it makes a huge difference. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, so what was that enough is enough moment where you felt that pivot point of, you know, you're starting to, in this case, you wanted to either get promoted or, you know, get additional um, information and just move forward? Yeah, you know, I, I think it kind of builds on that same concept where, you know, I spent, so I, I changed that mindset, but here's kind of the, the flip side to that was I got so focused on chasing an ambition mm. that I started to lose focus of what is my purpose. And, you know, I'm always, I was always looking for the next promotion, the next position, the next, the next, the next. And, and, but yet I always had this nagging feeling that something was missing or something wasn't just right. And so just uh, about three years ago, as I was looking forward, seeing that my son's going to graduate high school in 2020, he's going to go off and do his thing. I was like, you know, it's, it's going to be time for another transition for myself. I'll have 30 years in the IT career field uh, and it's just time to do something different. And when I started to really look at what I wanted to do, I realized I needed to get back to something that served a greater purpose than myself. And so that was kind of my enough is enough moment with chasing that ambition, going for that next level in your career, trying to make more money, things like that, because there's always more and more and more in, in those uh, respect that you can go after. But if it doesn't if it doesn't make you feel content or satisfied, then you really kind of 
are, are chasing the wrong thing. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a perfect transition into what I'm guessing what came up, and I don't know how recently this was, but Landmark Life Coaching, you're guiding transitioning military to an empowering future, which mm. hits my heart very, very closely because I I still work at Triple Army Medical Center because I absolutely love working with active duty military and veterans. And I'll always, I will always do something for our veterans, no matter what it is that we do. So how did that come about? And, you know, who specifically is that for? I mean, I get it, veterans, but who specifically yeah. are you working with? Yeah, so that that is exactly what came out of that that revelation was like, you know, of all the things that I had done in my career, the things that motivated me the most and provided me the most fulfillment was adding value to others. And, and how I did that was through my leadership abilities and ability to coach people along both personally and professionally. And that's how I always built very successful teams around me and which led to my success. And so that's when I said, you know, I want to get into coaching. And initially it was, it was a much more open, broader coaching concept that I was looking at. But the more I got into it, I said, you know, I, w I was almost like trying to go away from what my background was and it kept pulling me back. And so I said, you know, there is a large number, hundreds of thousands of veterans that military that transition every year. And, you know, you just see the statistics and the narrative being so negative. And I said, you know, I, I would love to add value to and be part of changing that narrative to a positive and supporting military that are in the process of thinking about transitioning out as well as veterans that have already transitioned and said, you know, either a, it was a struggle and I need to do better or, you know, it wasn't so bad, but I still want to do better. And so those are really the ones I really focus my time on is being able to help them to understand after having spent 20 years now in, in the corporate area, um, w what it's like to kind of, go through that those those you know rickets and and the value that i really think that veterans bring military transitioning out bring um to the civilian sector yeah you know and correct me if i'm wrong because you've been working with these guys much closely in this arena but what i see in talking with veterans because i'm also a, a member of veterati have you mm -hmm. heard of veterati Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Very cool, very cool. I love when I get those messages to be able to talk and mentor with another veteran that's transitioning. But one of mm -hmm. the things I found is a lot of veterans really undersell themselves in the <laughs> corporate world. It's like, they're all, well, all I know how to do is, is pull staff duty and 24-hour duty and, and rock march and, you know, this kind of stuff. I'm like, no, 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 no. Let's dig into <laughs> what you really have done and let's translate that to a civilian. Um, what what are, what are the workforce, the civilian workforce is looking for and they're mm -hmm. blown away, absolutely blown away just by sitting down for like 30 minutes and going over this stuff. What is your experience with that? Yeah, no, I, I agree with that, you know, and I even did that myself when I got out. I, I really undersold myself, you know, monetarily and skill set and everything. And so I kind of set myself back farther than I needed to be. So I had to I had to overcome that. And so I absolutely agree with these core strengths that, that we develop in the military are second to none. And, and they're not naturally inherent to somebody who's not been in the military and if you can take those core strengths and translate it into a business sense to how you're going to add value to that person's that that individual's corporation how you're going to be able to help transform a department whatever that position is it it speaks um really loud to a hiring manager and myself having interviewed and hired hired hundreds of people over my career on, on in the civilian side I can tell you that when somebody can talk to my strategic vision and my strategic path for either at the time my department or you know now as a uh, chief information officer the the strategic part I have of our overall company strategic plan if if people I'm looking to hire can speak to how they can add value to that 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 to me is more important than talking about technical exact techni technical skills because technical skills can be learned if mm -hmm. you if you if you have other core strengths that just aren't that really can't be taught you just can't teach them on the job and so those things stand out much more to me yeah absolutely absolutely i talked to these guys who have been on job interviews and they're going for a second job interview or something and they're like look i'm going for this whatever it is and i don't know the 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 technical stuff behind it the numbers like um, mm -hmm. let's say I knew somebody was an equal opportunity advisor in the military and they want to go for an EEO job. Well, I don't know what the maximum, you know, 
the maximum is for to settle with, you know, the settle in that state or whatever. I said, that doesn't matter. That can be looked mm-hmm. up on Google. You got right. that information <laughs> sitting on your desk that you're going to go sit at in the next month or so. What they mm-hmm. want to know is, can you communicate with people? Can you mm-hmm. have a conversation and counsel people? Because that's the part right there that is learned through time and experience. All the other technical stuff, I can pick up a book and fill out a form. That's easy. Exactly. You know, yeah. can you communicate? Can you get your point across? And can you be empathetic to the situation to the situation at hand? And can you guide properly? Mm-hmm. That's the harder yeah. part. It is. It absolutely is. Those soft skills are yes. not something you can just teach on the job. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Those soft. I'm glad you said that term right there because yeah. soft skills are not soft. Soft mm. skills are are being being man or woman enough to stand up, being adult, and telling people, look this is not going to work out very well for you type of thing. Or, you know, look, you're just not working. You're not working well here. So we're going to let you move on to find something mm-hmm. that is better for you type of thing. That That is doing the right thing for those people, not being, oh, yeah, I think you should. Do. No, it's not wishy-washy. It's very, being very firm with people. Um, but those skills are very, very important in the workplace. Absolutely. So, brother, we're at the point in the show where we are going to pay it forward to our abundant leaders. You ready to do that? Absolutely. Excellent. So share one to three actionable steps that men of abundance can take today. Yeah, I think one thing that I really, with people that I coach and mentor, is impressing on them the importance of investing in yourself. If you don't uh, step back and look at the areas that are important in your life and figure out where you need to be investing in yourself, whether it's becoming better with handling your money, getting your education where it needs to be, different areas like that, getting your health where it needs to be. If you're not investing in yourself, nobody else is going to. So I think my number one thing is make sure that you take the time to invest in yourself. Number two is you have to always be adding value to others. If you are adding value to others, it comes back and it comes back to you more than you typically, you know, put out. And so as long as you have an outward focus to to adding value to others, you will succeed in life. And I would also say make sure that you identify and, and can live your life's purpose. There's, you know, chasing an ambition is one thing, but, you know, you, you can do both. You really can. You can marry them up. And so it's, but you don't want to get to the end of the road and, and feel empty and feel like, okay, yeah, great. I made all this money, but, but now I have an, I have a house full of stuff, but, but still no satisfaction. And so I would say that third one is identifying and, and living your, your life's purpose. Man, excellent. Absolutely nothing to add to that spot on. What daily habits make the biggest impact in your life, Dwayne? Yeah, I, I, I have a a routine that I've developed that I go through and I tell you, I just feel off if I don't do it. It's funny because on weekends I have to remind myself, I get a little a little lax and I'm like, oh, you know, when the day's not seeming right, I'm like, you know, I have, I have not followed my daily habits. So four of them that are probably the, the must do's for me is prayer for sure. Um, journaling, you know, how, you know, sitting down in the morning and and journaling how I want my, what do I want out of the day? And, and what, what signs from, you know, the universe do I want to see that affirm that I've actually, you know, spent my time well that day. And then the other two are things we talked about before, which is the exercising and uh, doing my best to, (laughs) to eat clean. Yeah. Excellent. Sounds very familiar. So we are definitely going to have your book listed, The Empowered Veteran. But what other books would you recommend to our abundant leaders that they read or listen to and why? Yeah, I think one of the ones that's been most impactful for me this past year is I spent six months working with the Applied Neuroscience Institute out of California studying positivity and the effects of it and uh, Barbara Richardson's whole broaden and build theory, which is, you know, you can – if you. If you're positive, you can really have a much more broader uh, view of what's going on and be able to build a better future. And so she wrote a book called Positivity, and that's Positivity by Dr. Barbara Richardson. And it's a great read. I was a little concerned because it's a very, very academic kind of concepts, but she did a really great job laying it out in layman's terms where it's 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 actually a really good read. And so that one I, I uh, highly recommend. I actually have heard of that one, and I'll, I don't know that it's on my list, but I'll put it on there um, because I like that type of stuff. Now, when you're talking about positivity, can you kind of get a little bit more into specifically how that looks in the book? Because I'm really curious about that. 
Yeah, so, you know, um, the Applied Neuroscience Institute actually took it a little a step further, and they, they basically broke it down into how, you know, your emotions will drive how you think, which will drive how you act, right, and how you make decisions. And so really getting in touch with your emotions, and, you know, I can't say what they are off the top of my head right now, but there's five positive emotions that they that they really focus on and being able to know where you're at with those and pulse those those types of emotions through you during the day will really change the way you feel, which will change, you know, the way you think and the way you act. And so and then ultimately how you make are able to make decisions. And so, you know, that that will allow you to be the much more positive person because we're, we're naturally built to be instinctually negative because of the survival aspect of, of genetics. And so, you know, we have to be able to rebuild those negative natural neuro, naturally negative neural pathways into positive neural pathways. And it can be done, but it's a conscious intentional effort. And then over time, it becomes more of who you are and, and you're, and you just naturally do those and think, do those things and think that way. And, you know, for one of the things they bring up is for every negative thought you have or every negative feeling you have, you need anywhere from three to nine positive thoughts or feelings mm. to replace that negative one. And so when you start to realize that, you become much more conscious of, of what you're feeling and thinking because you don't want to have to overcome that on a regular basis. Excellent. Yeah, I have heard that before as well. Mm. An excellent explanation. Thanks for that. I appreciate that. Yeah. What do you feel holds most people back from living a life of true abundance? I think it's upper limit challenges in doubting themselves. Um, you know, we all have, you know, we what we perceive as limitations. Well, I can't do that or I, I don't think I could ever get to that level. Well, once you start thinking that, you've now putting in these upper limit challenges that may or may not be real and you start creating self-doubt and you start limiting what you're willing to do or how you're willing to do it. And so then ultimately it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? You just mm -hmm. don't do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely right. That self-fulfilling prophecy. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so what does living a life of abundance mean to you, Dwayne? I think feeling at the end of the day, feeling fulfilled and empowered is important. You need to be able to at the, you know, when you get to the end of each day, you want to be able to just have this sense of contentment. And that doesn't mean that you've gone out and made a million dollars. It doesn't mean that you have every new toy known to man or you have a million friends. It means you have what is right for you at the time. And so that you can, you can feel you know, that you, that, that you're where you're supposed to be. Excellent. Absolutely love that. So we're going to get ready to close this up here, but before we do, what did we not talk about that you want to ensure that our abundant leaders get out of our conversation today? Yeah, I, I, I think we've talked a lot of, a lot about some great things and I, I think just really taking the time and ensuring if nothing else out of what we talked about today is living your finding and living your life's purpose because everything else will fall in line with that. Excellent. And of course, we're going to have Landmark Life Coaching uh, linked up at Men of Abundance as well. Your website is a beautiful website, by the way. But I do Thank want you. to ask you, are you just is this just for veterans? Uh, I do coach others. I uh, it's funny when I first started, I I've I've coached an opera singer. I've coached people that are in network marketing, and so really anybody that that's in transition, right? You can I really focus on the transition aspect. So anybody, mm -hmm. everybody's always in transition for in some aspect, and transitions are tough. And so I'm open to coaching anybody that's in transition. It's just really my my heart and my focus, you know, primarily is with the veteran community. Got it. Excellent. Yeah. And I'm glad I asked that question. I'm glad you're doing that because many of our guys here are veterans, but quite a few of them are not, as a matter of fact. Yeah. And is it just uh, men or women or both? Uh, both. Yep. Excellent. Both. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All of you that are listening, you know, if Dwayne resonates with you, you dig what he's got going on, check out his website, get connected with him. And at the very least, you know, show him some support, you know, for the veterans and have a conversation with him. Maybe he's somebody that you might want to work with in, in your transition. Because there are definitely a lot of many needs for transition for so many of you out there. And um, I think this would be a great resource for you. All right, man. So that is about going to close it up. You go out and live your amazing 
life of abundance. And man, just keep paying it forward, brother. Hey, thanks a lot. My pleasure. Aloha. All right, guys, as we discussed, transitioning can be tough, no matter what kind of transition it is. But man, it's also exciting. It's a time for a new beginning. The thing I try to tell guys all the time when they feel stuck is, look, you're not a tree. You can move on. You can start over. What you've done for the last 10, 20 years doesn't define who you are. You know, when I say things, I've always heard that, you know, men find themselves, that they figure out who they are by the age of 40. You know what the I, I, what I realized is now I'm getting ready to turn uh, 49 is I don't know that I'll ever find myself because I keep changing who I am and what I'm doing. And that's what keeps it so exciting. So exciting. That's what keeps us alive. So being stagnant, staying in one job, staying in one career, staying in one location just doesn't fit me very well. For 25 years, I moved every three to four years. I moved to a new state or country, picked up my whole family. And the longest I've ever been in any place is here in Hawaii for 10 years. We're transitioning. We're picking up and moving and we're moving to Florida because we want something new. So it is scary. It can be scary. But you know what? Find somebody who's done what you're doing and what you're moving into. Find somebody who has transitioned. Get connected with Dwayne. Go listen to the Charlie Mike podcast or any other type of group of men or women that are transitioning. The bottom line is this. No matter what it is that you're doing, find a group of people that can that are that have done what you're doing or on their way to what you're doing connect with them because they will be able to share with you the do's and don'ts or at least kind of what to expect on your journey now go out and live your life of abundance and make sure to pay it forward that's all for today abundance leaders for more about our guests and the powerful information we shared with you today be sure to sign up for our mailing list at menofabundance.com We appreciate your time and look forward to hanging out with you on our next episode. So until then, be sure to pay it forward and live your life of abundance.